water rolls off the side, and I think I'm doing them a great service. I'm using waterfall as an example, not recognizing that some kids have the advantage because they've seen a waterfall. Some kids are like, what's a waterfall? I made that mistake one time in my AP physics class. We were talking about instantaneous velocity versus, uh, versus average velocity. And I said, um, hey, you know, it's like when you're driving your car and you put the car on cruise control. And I had one of the kids in my class, she was new to the country. She's like, what is cruise control? Every other kid in the class knew what I meant because they had cars to drive to school. And she was fresh from Vietnam. And she was like, what is cruise control, Mr. Bethel? What else? Give me one more barrier and we'll move on. Huh? Some of, our, some, of like some of our kids have had a year or two or three where they hadn't had any education, so their knowledge bank is not as... Uh, a priori knowledge. How much knowledge do they come to my class with? Right? Here's what I did for the teachers in my school system that I'm not going to do for you guys, because honestly, your answers are way different than theirs. <laughs> their answers, because I knew, I knew what I was working with in my school system, their answers were literacy. Can the kids read when they get to my class? Time. Do I have enough time, even in eighth grade, to cover all the standards in the depth that I need to go? Stuff like that. And then I, I, gave, I said, flip that piece of paper that you wrote those barriers on over to the back, and I want everybody to write this down. And I said, all right, we're ready. And they thought I was going to give them the answer, I was going to solve the world's mystery. I said, write this down on the back piece of your paper. M, E, put your pencils down. I said, the greatest barrier to student learning is the teacher, right? The number one factor to, to, the number one factor to student success, not just in science, but in any class, is the teacher. How ready are you to, how equipped are you to provide the instruction that it's going to take to get your student performance up? And being honest with yourself, not in the way that you broadcast to everybody else, but saying, you know what, I don't know enough about what the standards actually mean. Or I don't know how to assess or something like that, you know? Now, I, I'm telling you guys just what I told them. I'm not telling that to you guys because I haven't seen you teach. That would be unfair of me to say that to you, you know what I mean? But I'll tell you that that's what I told them. And I said, I want to help you with that. How can you better prepare yourself to teach so that you can drive higher student performance in your science class? Because in reality, that's the only thing you can control. I can't control which kids come to my class. I can't control whether they know how to read or not when they get here. The only thing I can control is, did I plan a good lesson or not, and am I prepared to deliver it? So let's, let me get the best that I can in that area. You know what I mean? So number one, if we want high performance in science, then we have to do this. Know what to teach. Step number one in your science class is to know what to teach. And I'll tell you, across our state, not picking on you and Dalton, but across our state, including <coughs> me, this is a struggle for us. How do I know what to teach? Sure, the, the, the schedule says that I teach sixth grade earth science. And of course, I know at some point I'll be talking about planets, and at some point I'll be talking about the sun, and at some point I'll be talking about rocks. But beyond that, how do I know what to teach? The schedule says I teach ninth grade biology, but beyond that, how do I know what to teach? Number one, really get to know GSE. GSE are the Georgia Standards for Excellence in whatever your subject is. So when you come to your PLC, you and your team should have the standards out for whatever unit you're on. And you should be in very deep conversation. What does this standard mean? Standard says that at the end of this unit, kids will be able to construct a model that shows their understanding of how cell organelles maintain homeostasis. And we need to be talking about what does that really mean? Otherwise, I might be teaching them about cell parts that I really don't need to teach them. You know what I mean? So really, really get to know the standards for your class. Second thing that I know we've all seen the standards. The second thing I venture to say some of the folks in this room haven't seen it before. So this one's going to be brand new. I want to introduce you to something called the NGSS Matrix with Disciplinary Core Ideas. That's a long term for this. Let me tell you. 
Georgia, and raise your hand know what NGSS is? Next Generation Science Standards. Next Generation Science Standards, I'm, I'm wrong in saying this, but in paraphrasing, I'll put it this way. NGSS, Next Generation Science Standards, was supposed to be the common core for science. This idea that we can have one set of standards for the entire country, and everybody in the, in the country, in America, is teaching the same things the same way. Right? That's what NGSS was supposed to be. Next Generation Science Standards. And although we never adopted it, Georgia cannot say that we are a Next Generation Science Standards state. We are not an NGSS state. When our state created the Georgia Center Standards of Excellence, there's no doubt we used NGSS as the rationale, as the backdrop. If you hold those two documents side by side, you will see the similarities and you will know the folks they had in the room making our new standards were looking at NGSS, not if you know what I'm, if you know what I'm talking about. So let me show you something then. The folks who made NGSS created this document I'm going to show you that I'm willing to bet most of the folks in this room have never seen. I made it a tiny URL so that it's easier to find. And it won't pull up. <laughs> Isn't that how the game goes? Luckily, uh, this is even better. I'll show you how to find it when you get back to your classroom. If you Google NGSS DCI matrix or content matrix, the matrix of disciplinary core ideas for science. It pulls up a chart that looks like this, and it's too small probably for you to see where you are. But let me tell you what it is. It shows the continuum for any standard in any science class throughout the life of a child. This is not a, a standard in Georgia. But no doubt, this is the rationale for some of the standards in Georgia. In ninth grade biology, SB1, GSE SB1, the GSE SB3B says, students will obtain, communicate, what is it, obtain something and communicate data that reflects their understanding of the structure and function of cell parts. Does it make sense? So that aligns to this standard in NGSS matrix. But look at what it does, especially elementary. That means that in elementary school, from K to 2, all the child was supposed to learn was this. And then in middle school, I mean, later elementary, from 3rd to 5th, they transition to this, which builds off of that, right? And then in middle school, from 6 to 8, this is what they learn that builds off of that. And then from 9 to 12, this is what they learn that builds off of that. It tells us where to stop. Otherwise, you don't know where to stop. You might be spending time in your sixth grade class teaching a kid something that they really don't have to learn until 10th grade. In reality, you might be spending time in your seventh grade class teaching a kid something that they're supposed to learn in ninth grade because you don't know where to stop. What, is, what does cell parts mean in fifth? What have I told you? There's, about, there's altogether something like 25 different cell parts. Nucleus, nucleolus, cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, lysosomes, spindle fibers. Um, help me out here. Mitochondria, uh, chloroplasts, Golgi bodies, endoplasmic, smooth endoplasmic particle, rough endoplasmic, I can go on and on. In a room full of scientists, you know what I'm talking about, right? Anybody here teach seventh grade life science? What if I told you in seventh grade life science, you're only supposed to teach K3 of them? The only ones that are supposed to learn in seventh grade are cell membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm. That means if you're in your seventh grade class trying to teach the kid all 30 of them, you're wasting instructional time. You know what I mean? But that's because nobody's ever really clearly communicated where does your class stop and the other ones start. And it, wait, I shouldn't have said waste of time. There's no waste of time in class as long as you're teaching. But I put it this way. You're borrowing time from something else to teach beyond your curriculum. 
The time you're spending teaching the kid the other 21 cell parts is time you were supposed to be spending teaching him the macromolecules. Proteins, nucleic acids, fats, and carbohydrates. Does that make sense? So when you're budgeting time and what to spend and how to do it, you gotta know where's my part start and my part end. And we see that in this disciplinary core idea matrix. Is this new to anybody? Raise your hand this is new. Some of the folks have seen this before? Awesome, some have, some haven't. This, this was new for the teachers in my school system. So I tell them now, to your PLC, bring this and bring your standard. And let's talk about where you should start and where you should end. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go beyond your curriculum. That's fine, but you need to be able to justify that. I'm going to say, why are you teaching this kid extra cell parts in your class? And I'm not, I'm not judging you, but I want to hear that you have a rationale. Hey, I think that this is going to help him better understand cell division later. Otherwise, I'm going to say, is that the right way to budget your time? Because what I hear in April is, oh, I didn't come from all the standards because I didn't have enough time. Well, the reason why I didn't have enough time is because you were teaching beyond what you were supposed to have taught. Make sense or no? Yes? yes? So know what to teach is step number one. If we want to drive student performance, student achievement in science, we have to know what to teach. I don't, I don't advocate anybody teaching to the test. I'm not that kind of teacher, and I don't want other teachers like that on my team. But I do want you to be preparing the kids for what they're going to